Hi everyone. Today I'm going to use Blender to animate in 2D but into a three-dimensional background. For this rough animation I'm going to use this 3D background provided by Florian Opetit who is the lighting supervisor at the Spa Studios and I'm going to use the main character of the movie Ember, Dikika, and these are drawings of her made by the character supervisor Jorge Capote during the development of the movie. I prepared a grease pencil object and a camera movement which is going to dictate the animation for this demonstration. Now let's go inside the eye of the camera. You can see already some artwork which is a first pass for me to understand roughly the timing and spacing of the character moving around the background and also this is important to place the character at the right depth before doing the real thing. Now if I go out of the camera you can see exactly where the character is placed in depth and because this is just a demonstration and not a tutorial I'm not going to go into the technicalities of this process but let me just say that Moving a grease pencil object in depth works the same way as with any other 3D object in Blender. The important thing when you animate 2D, like I'm doing now in a 3D background, is that the grease pencil object has to always face camera, and this version of Blender allows to create a grease pencil object always facing camera. Now let me import the model sheet which is now going to follow the character in depth because it is part of the grease pencil object and that will allow me to keep track of the right size of the character without worrying about resizing the model sheet manually. And now let's pick uh, the main couple keys, maybe two or three drawings. The first one, then maybe this compression drawing here and the final destination drawing, this one here, just to establish some uh, kind of landmarks and then I will keep going. Okay, so let's just skip through this process of finding the main keys. All I'm doing is just trying to find nice silhouettes and uh, convincing drawings, but I'm not gonna be very detailed as long as the drawings convey the attitude that I'm looking for and as I do that, I sometimes fine-tune the depth of the object and I often flip horizontally to avoid having an unbalanced or skewed drawing like I'm doing here. Okay, now that the three main poses have been established, pose 1, pose 2 and pose 3, which is the final destination key, I can start focusing on the main 2D animation and I don't have to worry about depth anymore because that has been prepared on this bouncing ball which was very very fast to draw and now this also gives me a very rough suggestion of where the character should be on screen. I can decide to stick to that or go somewhere else if I find better ideas but now the ground is prepared. And so this is the time lapse of the work that I have done. Uh, let's just keep through it quickly so it doesn't last too long and doesn't become boring. But I want to show you uh, every step of my work. And the way I animate an action like this is that I draw the main poses, the ones that I feel the need of drawing or establishing, and then I connect them. So it's basically a pose to pose approach but it is a pose-to-pose approach where often my key drawings are achieved by a straight-ahead process. So it's like a straight-ahead process with gaps, which I then take care of on a second moment, creating the in-betweens. Also, one interesting part uh, is that I usually draw the head, body and legs group in this case I'm also drawing the arms, but I'm always aware that the arms are secondary unless, like here, they are used as legs. They are uh, secondary and so I constantly keep fixing them or if I am not sure about where to draw them, I just do not draw them. I skip the process and then I go back in between the rest of the body and then on top of that I animate the arms. 
Okay, so I'll leave you to the time lapse and I'll resume talking at the end of the process. All right, so after some work, we have a rough. Let's have a look at it. There. There is a part in this rough where I would probably add more in-betweens, which is this part here, exactly. Because of the panning camera movement, this results into a left-right movement on the character, which is still on twos. But for the purposes of a review, for example, if I were to show this to the director, this would be more than enough to understand what I'm trying to propose. 
Okay, so what is the real advantage of working this way, apart from it looking cool? You might be wondering. Well, this method will give you extra flexibility and freedom in the way you place your cameras and move them. So if you're planning on doing a movie or a short where there's a lot of camera motion, this could be the right approach. Let me give you an example. So let's say I want to work the same way as we did on Klaus, which is the old school way. We would wait for the camera motion to be baked and given to us animators, and we would draw as I'm doing now by placing the character on the branch, but it's fake. The moment I get out of camera, as you can see, the trick is revealed. And that means that my animation will only work from that camera movement. The same thing is not happening on Dikika. So as you can see, I don't need to counter animate Dikika as the background is moving. Also, I made a different camera here. And as you can see, the same action will work from this other angle because it's more or less the same angle as the previous camera, just wider and lower maybe. It might require a few tweaks here and there, wherever the animation is jumping, but that shows clearly how much more freedom and flexibility you have with the camera work. See, I'm also cutting here from one camera to the other, and I don't have to worry about repositioning the character in the space, faking the depth, because the character is really there. So it's a bit like working in a 3D movie with 3D characters, but with all the advantages of hand-drawn animation. It is worth reminding that, like in my previous videos, for this demonstration I am using the SPA version of Blender, which you can download for free from the link down into the description. I recommend it because it has a special tool set, which will make your life easier if you want to animate 2D using the grease pencil. So I hope this was fun and informative. I look forward to reading your comments, and as usual, thanks for watching.